Hey guys, this is Andy, and uh, today I'm going to bring you a tutorial on how to render and apply a depth pass using Cinema 4D and After Effects. So let's jump right into it. Okay, first of all, I'm going to explain why you'd need a depth pass. Because, well, first of all, I will show you. It, in Cinema 4D, I've actually set up this um, render scene with uh, this Grid uh, this grid array of cubes and there's some depth of field on the camera as you can see and there's just a little softbox up there and when I render you will see there is when the depth pass yeah there we go yeah there's some depth of field on the um, the, uh, the far cubes and how I achieved this was using the depth of field settings if you right click here or go to effect and depth of field is where have you gone it's not there because it's here so it, it's been this list somewhere and uh, you can just change some of the settings but um, the main reason we do a depth fa pass is because depth of field in cinema 4d doesn't work with animation and I'll show you why if I um, <clears throat> open up this quick time and I will show you why. So I rendered this scene and just watch what happens. The depth of field flickers for some reason. I have no idea why. I don't know if it's a bug. I I don't I don't know if it's um if there's some settings I'm meant to change to do that. But as far as I'm aware that's not meant to happen. Um also it happened in one of my other previous um videos uh, one of my other intros. This is just a shot from the Mercedes Ident that I made, <coughs> and um, I ended up taking depth of field off because um, it didn't. Um, I didn't know how to do depth pass then. I actually didn't know about depth pass, but you see the way it flickers when the camera is animated and the object animated. It just it doesn't look very nice, and you can't hide that uh, post either. So. There's a way to fix that, and that's a depth pass. So, how you will do that is you set up your camera uh, with the depth of field um, using the depth of field uh, map rear uh, blur, choosing the focal point and obviously uh, the rear blur. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I can put a link in the description to a tutorial on how to achieve depth of field. Then you can just follow on and do the depth pass. and uh, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to untick depth uh, depth of field or just delete it in general. Um, tick multi pass. Um, go to the multi pass options, and right at the bottom you will see depth. And depth of the depth map is there now. now. There's nothing to add. There's no parameters to change other than in the save. Um, you save your render here. So let me just. Um, uh, let me just tuck to render, and so that's your that's the render save, and here is the depth pass save. So you want to go to uh, where you want to save it and type in depth pass or depth map, and you can save it uh, whatever you want a um, a P um, PNG sequence or I'm just going to do a quick time movie. You don't need to change anything else unless you have a different frame rate. I'm just going to keep it on 30. I usually change it to 24 and how you do that is well, it got options and it's got 24 there but since I'm not um, changing any of the uh, project settings in Cinema 4D I don't need to change that. Okay so when you render now um, oops I forgot to take the camera let me just overwrite that. Okay, when you render now, it will be rendering your scene. And as you see, it didn't render any of the depth. But how you will see that is, well, you'd normally see uh, this. If you look in history, you'll see um, the hierarchy of all the frames within the folders that you've saved it in. If you go over to layer, then you tick single pass, you'll see the alpha, and you'll see the depth. And what this depth shows you is, um, the very black areas are the things that are in focus, the things that are in full focus, and the gradient from black to white 
is going from focus to out of focus so you can't see any of the cubes there because they're completely out of focus so that that way we know it's worked okay I'll return I'll unpause this when it's finished rendering okay this is just finished rendering and if we take a look in the folder that we rendered it to or we saved it to uh, you will see um, this is the file this is the animation and this should have no depth of field yeah that's perfect and if we look at the depth map yes this is perfect as well yeah that's brilliant okay so what we want to do now is head on over to After Effects and import the footage. So let's just click on the Project tab and then grab your footage and drag it straight in. And it will import. And get the animation and drag it down to this little button here. Uh, that's if you want to keep the comp size. If not, you can go to Composition, then New Comp, and change the settings there. And make sure you keep the frame rate that you rendered at, that's very important otherwise it won't look right okay so um, what we want to do now is drag in the depth map it doesn't matter where it goes in the scene because uh, we're going to hide it so um, you want to go and click on your animation and go to effects and presets and type in lens and under blur and sharpen there should be camera lens blur you just drop that on and it blurs the whole thing and then what you want to do is change under blur map the layer you want to change the layer to the depth map and it will then blur what your depth map wants it to blur so if I just if actually let me just turn this to half and then uh, run preview it so yeah it's blurred correctly and there is a few things you can change. Um, the iris properties. Now I'll explain this um, using an image. Um, there's lots of, under shape. There's like triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, uh, all going up to decagon, and that is to do with the iris, or also known as the aperture. And you can see here, um, this is the aperture in a camera, and this controls the light that comes in and out of the camera uh, to hit the sensor or the film, depending on if you have a film or a digital camera. Uh, this is um, a closed aperture, so this means there's barely any light getting in, and this is an open one, that means there's lots of light getting in. And to achieve depth of field, you need a really wide aperture. But when it's really wide, you can see the blades of the iris, uh, they form this sort of shape, and there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's eight, so that's an octagon. So if you change that to octagon, that will resemble um, this aperture, but uh, that really doesn't matter. Um, usually the better lenses that you buy on the market will have more blades in them, which means um, the blur, or bokeh, which is Japanese for blur, um, will be smoother, but to be honest, uh, the blur looks better when it's a hexagon, but that's just personal preference. So you can change it to that, and to change the amount of blur, you need to change the blur radius so if I just bump this up to full and 100% uh, the blur radius will um, change how much it wants to blur I think it's on 5 by default it's control Z no it was actually on 9 was it? no it was on 5, okay 5 is default and there is another thing, where is it gone? Um, under blur map, blur focal distance, if you change this, it will actually invert the blur map, uh, the depth map, so you can pull to focus, which means just changing the distance in focus. So if you're familiar with photography or filmmaking, you will understand a lot of this terminology. If you're not, um, I hope you learned something new. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and remember to rate and comment and also suggests another tutorial.